This is Glenn Berry. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use CPU-Z for Windows. CPU-Z is a free utility that came out of the hardware overclocking community, but it's actually really useful in an IT setting, and it's really useful if you just want to find out more information about your processor. So if you go to CPUID.com, you'll go and see that they've got a CPU-Z section for CPU-Z, and they also have other software that's available. And we want the Windows version. So if you click on the Windows button, it's going to take you to the CPU-Z page. And then if you scroll down just a little bit, we'll see that they have a classic version and custom versions. We want the classic version, and we want the zip version in English rather than the setup version. With setup, you've got to run a setup program and install it and then uninstall it, and I don't want to worry about that. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the zip version, and that's going to take me to the download now page. And if I click on that, it's going to download the cpuz.zip file, and it's only three megabytes, so it should come down really quickly. And so then I can open that file and see that there's only four files inside of the zip file, and we want cpuz underscore x64 since we have a 64-bit operating system. So I'm going to go ahead and minimize the browser, and then I can grab cpuz and stick it on my desktop. And once I have it there, then I can run CPU-Z and actually see what's going on with the processor on my machine. Okay, once you've got CPU-Z downloaded, the next thing you need to do is actually run it. So, so once it's going, you got to wait maybe five or six seconds for it to read your processor information. And then it comes up on the CPU tab. And once you have this up, you can see that it tells you what kind of processor you have. In my case, I've got an AMD Ryzen 9 3950X. The code name for that processor tells you what package it is, what technology, it's seven nanometers. It tells you all about the stepping and revision in the CPU and what instructions that it supports. But probably the most interesting thing on this first tab is the core speed. So it shows you core zero by default, but if you hover the mouse over and right click here, you can see all the cores for the processor and you can see their real time clock speed. And that's one of the reasons why this utility is really useful both for gamers and for people in IT because you can see how fast your processor is running at all times and across all the cores. And why you care about this is it has a big effect on performance because you've got the Windows Power Plan and then if you're running virtualized, you're gonna have the power policy for your virtualization layer. And then you also have your BIOS power settings. So all of those will eventually show up here in your clock speed. And then the last thing you see here that's interesting is information about your cache sizes. So your L1 cache and your L2 cache and your L3 cache. And then if you had a multi-socket machine, you could pull this drop-down down and see all the different sockets. And then you can see how many total physical cores you have and how many threads you have in your entire system. So that's what it looks like on the CPU tab. Now the reason the CPU tab is so interesting, again, is the core speed that it shows you. And if you've got any kind of power management in effect, instead of running at the base clock speed, you're going to be running at a much lower clock speed. And then when you see a burst of activity, the CPU is going to try to throttle up. And there's some delay there depending on what processor you have and what operating system you have. So the latest version of Windows 10 throttles up more quickly than older versions do, for example. So if you've got any kind of power management in effect, it's going to make your processor run slower most of the time. And then the time that it takes to throttle up is going to hurt performance for certain sorts of bursty applications. And this is particularly relevant for SQL Server because a lot of single-threaded OLTP queries run and complete before the processor has time to actually throttle up. So after you're done looking at the CPU tab, then you can go to the caches tab. And this shows you the size of your level one data cache and then the size of your level one instruction cache and what type of cache they both are. And then the level two cache, which is larger but slower. And then finally, the level three cache, which is the largest, but has even more latency than the level two cache. So after the caches tab, we have the main board tab. And this is a very useful piece of information you get here. It tells you the manufacturer of your motherboard and the model of your motherboard. 
and it tells me we've got an AMD chipset and we have an X570 chipset to be specific. And then it shows you some BIOS information. So in my case, I've got version P2.70 that came out on July 2nd, 2020. And that happens to be the latest and greatest BIOS for this particular motherboard. But now that you know that information, you can go to the manufacturer's website and figure out whether or not you have the most up-to-date BIOS or not. And that's actually really important, especially for AMD Ryzen systems, but it's also important for servers. So if you're running SQL Server, for example, you wanna know for sure whether or not you've got the most up-to-date BIOS for your actual server model because a lot of important things get fixed with BIOS updates. So it's important that you keep that up to date as much as possible. The next tab we're gonna take a look at is the memory tab. And this tells you what type of memory you have. In this case, I've got DDR4. It also tells me how much memory I've got. I've got 64 gigabytes of RAM. And also it shows you whether you're in single channel mode or dual channel mode or quad channel mode, whatever the case may be for your system. And since this is an AMD Ryzen 9 system, the most I can do is dual channel mode. But one of the most valuable parts of this particular tab is the timings section right here in the middle. And this shows me that my DRAM is running at 1,064.9 megahertz. And that may sound high, but that's actually not correct for this system. I've got DDR3600, DDR4-3600 memory in here. So if I have XMP enabled, that should be reading at 1,800 megahertz, but it's not. And this is the default. And a lot of people who build their own systems, they never enable XMP, so they're running at a much lower speed than their memory can support. And that's what's happening to me now. Of course, I did this on purpose, so I'd have something interesting to talk about, but that's something you wanna check on your system. And then if you go to the SPD tab, which stands for Serial Presence Detect, by the way, this gives you more information about each one of your memory sticks in your system. So I've got four slots on this system right there. And then for each one, it tells me how big the module is and tells me the manufacturer and the model and part number. And this is where I know for sure I've got DDR3600 memory. And it's running at one of these JDEX speeds right now. And I want it to be running at XMP speed. And, but that's not happening because I don't have XMP enabled in the BIOS. So again, double check this on your system to make sure that you're running at XMP speed, if at all possible, because you're gonna get better performance, especially with AMD Ryzen processors. The next tab we're gonna take a look at is the graphics tab. And if we take a look there, what we see is we've got an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2080 Super video card, and it tells you the manufacturer of the board and the code name, and the manufacturing technology. So it gives you some information about your video card. And if I had integrated graphics on this processor, which I don't, it would actually let me display that here on this dropdown. So that's not a super interesting tab. So the next tab we're gonna look at is the bench tab. All right, one of the most interesting tabs of CPU-Z is the bench tab for benchmarking. And this lets you run about a 15 second benchmark that measures your CPU multi-threaded performance and then your CPU single-threaded performance. And you can also pull down this reference dropdown and they've got several different processors you can use to compare your system to. So I'm gonna compare mine to a Ryzen Threadripper 1950X processor. And when I click Bench CPU, then it runs the multi-threaded CPU test first, and that's measuring the total CPU capacity of your system. And then after about seven or eight seconds, it switches over and does a single-threaded test, and that's measuring the single-threaded performance of your particular processor. And that's sort of the difference between measuring performance and capacity for your CPU. And so you can see how this compares between my processor here and that older AMD Ryzen Threadripper 1950X processor. And you can see that I've got the same number of cores and threads as that older processor, but this newer processor is faster, so I've got more capacity and better single-threaded performance. This makes it interesting because you can use this to compare systems just with a quick 15-second benchmark. And again, it's not a realistic benchmark, it's just a synthetic CPU benchmark, but it's something quick and dirty you can run both on a client system like this 
and on a server if you're on a maintenance window or before you go to production. And you can also run this on a VM to make sure that the VM seems to be running properly. And you can also do this to see if your power management is set correctly. So this is a very useful quick and dirty benchmark that you can run. The final tab is the About tab, and that gives you some information about the version and the date of the program. And also it has a few tools that are useful. So you can save the report as a text file. So we can do that and then take a quick look at it once it comes up. So we can pull this up and you can see the version of the program and you can see how many sockets and how many threads. And this is a really large report that has a lot of information about your system in it. So I'm not gonna scroll through the entire thing slowly, but this has very detailed information, it even picks up information about your monitors here. So you've got that. And then we have the validation button. And if you wanna see what that does, that lets you upload information about your system to validate it. Because remember, the original reason for this program was for people to prove how high they could overclock their processor. So this is a way to actually prove that officially. So you can do that if you want to. And then it's got the clocks button, and this lets you see the clock speed of all your cores in your system in real time and also shows you what's going on with your memory, how fast it's running, and also even some information about your graphics, how fast it's running for graphics speed of the GPU itself and also for the GPU memory. And then finally, there is the clocks button or the timers button, I should say, and this shows you some information about the real-time clock that you can use. And this is mainly interesting to competitive overclockers, I believe. So that's the reason why that's there.